Eleven, route planning, monitoring, and voyage recording. Eleven point one, it should be possible to carry out route planning and route monitoring in a simple and reliable manner. Eleven point two, the largest scale data available in the SCNC for the area given should always be used by the ECTUS for all alarms or indications of crossing the ship's safety contour and of entering a prohibited area, and for alarms and indications according to Appendix 5. Eleven point three Route Planning 11.3.1 It should be possible to carry out route planning, including both straight and curved segments. 11.3.2 It should be possible to adjust a planned route alphanumerically and graphically including 1. Adding waypoints to a route 2. Deleting waypoints from a route and 3. Changing the position of a waypoint 11.3.3 It should be possible to plan one or more alternative routes in addition to the selected route. The selected route should be clearly distinguishable from the other routes. 11.3.4 An indication is required if the mariner plans a route across an own ship's safety contour. 11.3.5 An indication should be given if the mariner plans a route closer than a user-specified distance from the boundary of a prohibited area or a geographic area for which special conditions exist. See Appendix 4. An indication should also be given if the mariner plans a route closer than a user-specified distance from a point object, such as a fixed or floating aid to navigation or isolated danger. 11.3.6 Should be possible for the mariner to specify a cross-track limit of deviation from the planned route at which an automatic off-track alarm should be activated. 11.4 Route Monitoring 11.4.1 .1. For route monitoring, the selected route and own ship's position should appear whenever the display covers that area. 11.4.2 It should be possible to display a sea area that does not have the ship on the display. Example, for look ahead route planning while route monitoring. If this is done on the display used for route monitoring, the automatic route monitoring functions, example, updating ship's position and providing alarms and indications should be continuous. It should be possible to return to the route monitoring display covering own ship's position immediately by single operator action. 11.4.3 Actis should give an alarm if, within a specified time set by the mariner, own ship will cross the safety contour. 11.4.4 Actis should give an alarm or indication as selected by the mariner if, within a specified timer set by the mariner, own ship will cross the boundary of a prohibited area or of a geographical area for which special conditions exist. See Appendix 4. 11.4.5 An alarm should be given when the specified cross-track limit for deviation from the planned route is exceeded. 11.4.6 An indication should be given to the mariner if, continuing on its present course and speed over a specified time or distance set by the mariner, own ship will pass closer than a user-specified distance from a danger. Example, obstruction, wreck, 
rock that is shallower than the mariner's safety contour or an aid to navigation. Eleven point four point seven. The ship's position should be derived from a continuous positioning system of an accuracy consistent with the requirements of safe navigation. Whenever possible, a second independent positioning source, preferably of a different type, should be provided. In such cases, Actis should be capable of identifying discrepancies between the two sources. 11.4.8 Actis should provide an alarm when the input from position, heading or speed sources is lost. Actis should also repeat, but only as an indication, any alarm or indication passed to it from position, heading or speed sources. 11.4.9 An alarm should be given by Actis when the ship reaches a specified time or distance set by the mariner in advance of a critical point on the planned route. 11.4.10 The positioning system and the SCNC should be on the same geodetic datum. Actis should give an alarm if this is not the case. 11.4.11 It should be possible to display alternative routes in addition to the selected route. The selected route should be clearly distinguishable from the other routes. During the voyage, it should be possible for the mariner to modify the selected sailing route or change to an alternative route. 11.4.12 It should be possible to display 1. Time labels along a ship's track manually on demand and automatically at intervals selected between 1 and 120 minutes and 2. An adequate number of points, free movable electronic bearing lines, variable and fixed range markers and other symbols required for navigation purposes and specified in Appendix 3. 11.4.13 It should be possible to enter the geographical coordinates of any position and then display that position on demand. Also, it should be possible to select any point Feature, symbol, or position on the display and read as geographical coordinates on demand. 11.4.14 It should be possible to adjust the displayed geographic position of the ship manually. This manual adjustment should be noted alphanumerically on the screen, maintained until altered by the mariner, automatically recorded. 11.4.15.1 Actis should provide the capability to enter and plot manually obtained bearing and distance lines of position or LOP and calculate the resulting position of own ship. It should be possible to use a resulting position as an origin for dead reckoning. 11.4.15.2 Actis should indicate discrepancies between the positions obtained by continuous positioning systems and positions obtained by manual observations. 11.5 Voyage Recording 11.5.1 Actis should store and be able to reproduce certain minimum elements required to reconstruct the navigation and verify the official database 
used during the previous 12 hours. The following data should be recorded at 1 minute intervals. 1. To ensure a record of own ship's past track, time, position, heading, and speed. And 2. To ensure a record of official data used. ENC source, edition, date, cell, and update history. 11.5.2 In addition, Actis should record the complete track for the entire voyage, with time marks at intervals not exceeding 4 hours. 11.5.3 it should not be possible to manipulate or change the recorded information. 11.5.4 Actus should have a capability to preserve the record of the previous 12 hours and of the voyage track. Twelve. Calculation and Accuracy 12.1 The accuracy of all calculations performed by Actis should be independent of the characteristics of the output device and should be consistent with the SCNC accuracy. 12.2 Bearings and distances drawn on the display or those measured between features already drawn on the display should have accuracy no less than that afforded by the resolution of the display. 12.3. The system should be capable of performing and presenting the results of at least the following calculations. 1. True distance and azimuth between two geographical positions. 2. Geographic position from known position and distance slash azimuth. And 3. Theodetic calculations such as spheroidal distance, rhomb line, and great circle. 13. Performance tests, malfunctions, alarms, and indications. 13.1. Actus should be provided with means for either automatically or manually carrying out onboard tests of major functions. In case of a failure, the test should display information to indicate which module is at fault. 13.2 Actus should provide a suitable alarm or indication of system malfunction. 14. Backup Arrangements Adequate backup arrangements should be provided to ensure safe navigation in case of an Actis failure. See Appendix 6. 1. Facilities enabling a safe takeover of the Actis functions should be provided in order to ensure that an Actis failure does not develop into a critical situation. 2. A backup arrangement should provide means of safe navigation for the remaining part of a voyage in the case of an Actis failure. Module C Interfacing and Integration 15. Connections with other equipment 15.1 Actis should not degrade the performance of any equipment providing sensor inputs, nor should the connection of optional equipment Degrade the performance of Actis below the standard. 15.2 Actis should be connected to the ship's position fixing system, to the gyro compass, and to the speed and distance measuring device. For ships not fitted with a gyro compass, Actis should be connected to a marine transmitting heading device. 15.3 Actis may provide a means to supply SCNC information to external equipment. 16. 
Power supply 16.1 It should be possible to operate Actis and all equipment necessary for its normal functioning when supplied by an emergency source of electrical power in accordance with the appropriate requirements of Chapter 2-1 of the 1974 SOLAS Convention, as amended. 16.2 Changing from one source of power supply to another or any interruption of the supply for a period of up to 45 seconds should not require the equipment to be manually reinitialized.